13, 14 year uh, NBA vet from big, big city of Longview, Texas. We got, if you're a Juco guy, raise your hand. He's a Temple Leopard, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a Panola Pony. So you, you probably used to do business on Panola yeah. one, one time or another. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, he, we're very, very blessed to have him here. And, and you know, we're, it's exciting for us to have him because he's been through a lot of the wars that we're uh, fixing to go through and are going through right now. Uh, and, and I'm just very blessed that he took some time out of his busy day back working with the Hornets, uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways face the franchise uh, and a lot of things we're doing in the community. So I just want to thank you for coming on behalf of our program. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about just kind of the process and, and how it affects um, you as individuals, as players, and as this team goes forward. Um, I've been right where you've been. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I got to where I am because it talks a lot. It talks to you in a sense that uh, there's going to be doubters and haters and guys out there that believe and don't believe or overhype you and get you believing you're better than you are when you guys got to believe in each other and believe in yourselves. So, um, and the process of this whole rebuilding thing um, you know, when I came out of high school, I was the guy. You know, all state this, all that, the whole nine. And I had no scholarship offers. I went and visited uh, Centenary, and, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm in. This is it. I'm, I'm going to Centenary. They never called back. You know, everybody thought I was, you know, too short to play the shooting guard position, couldn't handle enough to play the point. So, you know, I get the call from Temple. I go to Temple for a year and, you know, just kind of, and, you know, God, God has a plan. And, and your job as individuals is to be ready when your number's called in life and in basketball. My career was built on being ready. So, you know, I, I got my mind and, I, you know, I'm thinking, man, I'm, you know, all these Texas, I'm going somewhere. And my only offer was the Temple College. Excuse me. So I, I, I go to Temple College, and when I came out of Temple College, I had two offers, one to Sam Houston State and one to Baylor University. I went down to, Bay I went down to Sam Houston State first, had a blast. We partied. I was on stage. I was acting a complete fool. I was going to Sam Houston State. Well, Baylor flies in my mom and dad. My mom and dad made me go to Baylor, which for a young person, you're starting to think you've got to figure it out a little bit. You know, you're at that age where you're on your own and you're feeling like, and you don't want to listen. And it's hard to listen. But there are people that have been there and done that. Obviously, my parents had a better idea of what I should have done. And had I gone to Sam Houston State, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Because Sam Houston State's program just completely folded. Go to Baylor, three years at Baylor, MVP of the conference, leading scorer in the conference. I'm going to get drafted. I didn't get drafted. It, it wasn't my time. And everything you'll notice, everything took one more year. I didn't go to Division I until the next year. I didn't go to the pros till the next year. Um, so I played the, got drafted in the CBA, played in the CBA for a year, played in Venezuela for two and a half months in the summer, coming back from Venezuela trying out with the Clippers, and New Jersey. Made the New Jersey team. And again, I'm thinking, I'm here, but I don't really feel like I belong. And so I go through that year, and I'm, I play behind Kenny Anderson, which you guys probably may have heard of him. New York legend, lefty. He had stuff I would never do. I mean, he could just throw passes. I, I go back home and watch film of games I didn't even play in just to see him do what he does. He let all guards and minutes played, which meant I played very little. So the next year, same process again. Go through the whole tryout process, summer league and everything, and I make Boston's team. I played there for three years. My first year was in 93. How old were you guys in 93? Three more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go through it every day. Yeah. I go through it every day. It's crazy. So, so in 93 was my first year, 
Then I had three years, in, one year in Jersey, three years in Boston. Let's talk a little bit about team. The first year in the league, we went to the playoffs. We lost to Shaquille O'Neal's Orlando in the first round. My second year, we go to the play. No, no, no. My first year, we lose to New York. My second year, we lose to Orlando. But both years, I've been in the playoffs, which is great. Also in my second year was the first time I got a chance to start. But when the starting point guard went down, I didn't start for six games when I'm sitting there thinking, man, it's my turn. I mean, I'm on the edge of the bench every night. Like, this is my chance. And it didn't come for six games. My first game was against Seattle Supersonics. Gary Payton, the glove, long arms, cheating, passing lanes, the whole thing. And we won. So we get in the playoffs. So I've been in the playoff two years, and then uh, injury my injury my third year, and then my fourth year comes. And we're awful. Everybody on the team is hurt. We to play an NBA game, you have to have eight players in uniform. We had eight players in uniform, but that eight player wasn't going to play. So that's the kind of season we won 15 or 16 games out of 82. It was a tough year, but I was in a part of a rebuilding team. The next year I go to Charlotte. I'm there seven and a half years, year and a half in Houston, and a year with Cleveland. Got a chance to play in a lot of playoffs. Got to go to the finals my last year with uh, LeBron playing the Spurs in 07. That was my last year in the league. Now, in my in all the years that I was working to be a starter, and I've, I've been where all you guys have been, so I've been on, if you're a starter, if you've been the man, if you've been on the bench, if you've been the 12th guy, I've been all those. So I understand all of your, all of your situations, but when your time comes, you gotta shine. You gotta be ready to step up for the team and do what it is you do, because it is a process. This is gonna take a while, you know, but enjoy the process. You can't skip steps. You have to enjoy that process because before you know it, it's over. <clears throat> if you didn't enjoy it, why are you even playing basketball? You know, I talk to, to younger guys and you guys and, you know, all the parents want to know, what can my son do? Have fun. There, there's no magic. There's, there's no, I love to play basketball. So when it was time to go out, Nah, I'm going to get some sleep because I want to play. Hey, let's go to the movies today. Nah, I'm going to go play. Let's watch an NBA game on Sunday. No, I want to go play. So my, my enjoyment, my first option every day was to play basketball. That's how I got better. You know, being out there, now I'm working on, you know, the left or the handle or the shot that, you know, got me through my whole career. Everybody can defend. Everybody can play hard. Every opportunity you get, and I'm telling you, this goes like that. Your career is over. Your, your college career days are over. Now you're looking to do something else. Enjoy this, guys. This is good times. When you get out there in the real world, it's a whole different picture. And I enjoy college. All the guys that leave college early, <laughs> while I understand, you know, people, the, the average non-athlete that goes to school, they're going to school to make more money. Well, what happens if you're 6'11 with a jump shot? How do you tell a guy you don't go pro, you know, in his sophomore year? So I get it. Um, after I was done, <clears throat> I played golf, played around, did everything. But you know, then I went back to Baylor. And they were going through a, you know, a big, huge rebuilding time. And they've been terrible for years but they worked the process. You know, they got that one recruit, then they got that next recruit, um, then they got the, the right coach that, that, that has a spiritual um, grace about him that, that people buy into. And you should see it. It's a whole different, I mean, new equipment, the whole thing, but that whole process has gotten to where, you know, each year they're expected to be in the NCAA, not hoping 
but it didn't just start off just magically. It was a process, and all you guys got to be a part of that and want to be a part of that, that process. Um, then I went from that to coaching in two years. Uh, and believe me, when all you guys, or if any of you guys ever decide to coach, you will realize the stuff you do. It'll all come back to you. It's almost like your parents saying, I can't wait till you have children because it all comes back. I wanted to call two of my coaches in the NBA and apologize to them just because I coached for two years. Because now you see the grumpy guy, the guy who comes in, he always has a bad attitude, the one that always has something to say, the one who wants to do it his way. And you just want everybody to play together. I've been on some very average teams where we all bought in and we were better than average. I've been on some really, really good teams where it was always those two or three individuals and we were never as good as we should have been. I played with Jamal Mashburn and um, Baron Davis. Off the court, we may go hang out, laugh and joke. It was good times. You would never know that there was anything wrong. But when we got on the court, it was just something. They didn't like each other. It was my turn to shoot. I may shoot three or four times. It was his turn to shoot. Uh, he shoots three or four times. My turn again, his turn again. My, and we weren't as good because we weren't all on the same page. You got, your coaching staff is gonna tell you guys what to do. It's your job to execute it. If everybody's not trying to execute the same thing, then you're not gonna be as good as you should be. And I didn't, re I didn't realize that as much until I was a coach and I understood that, you know, my, my first year as an assistant coach was under a woman. Has anybody heard of Nancy Lieberman? All right, Google her. I mean, she would love for you to Google her. She loves her as a Nancy Lieberman. <laughs> but she's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer could play and play, you know, first, she's got a lot of firsts. First one to play with, she played in the, Maybe it was the USBL. USBL. USBL? She played in the USBL with men. Now, I don't know how great she was, but she was good enough for them to allow her to play. And she still plays. She's 51 or 2 now <laughs> and still got games. Still get out there and run and do things. But can a female coach men? Well, my thought was no. But my thought also was, regardless of what she's telling us, if we all do it together, we all do it the same, and we're all on the same page, we at least have a chance. And that's, that's the biggest message I can tell a, a basketball team is just be together. You know, if y'all got issues with one another, talk about them. Hey, what's, 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 what's your issue with me? Get it out. Let it go. Have fun and enjoy it. <laughs> and we can sit around and talk about it right now. It's great. Yeah, you know, I don't like you. Well, why? <laughs> you know. So um, I, I have I have been truly blessed to to be able to to play as long as I did. Um, to to have a platform to to talk to you guys. And now I'm broadcasting, color analyst for the, for the New Orleans Hornets. And if you haven't watched them play, watch them. That team, that team is not as good as the team that they've already beat. But there isn't a piece, there ain't a loose piece out there. Everything is right there. They defend and they defend every night. They play with energy and they play with energy every night. Offensively and any new team, any new group of teams, there's nine new players. They have, uh, the average age is 23. Um, they have, they played the San Antonio Spurs on opening night. And 10 guys have 23 years of NBA experience combined. 10 guys. Duncan and Parker had 29 between them, or 20. 
27 between them. So that tells you how young this team is. But they play, and they play together. And Mon uh, Monty Williams has them uh, doing it. So if you ever if you get a chance, you should keep an eye on them. It's a good team to watch. Good young guys that aren't much older than you guys that that are that are really playing some good basketball. And guys that are playing a little bit out of position. You know, they lose Anthony Davis in in, uh, in their first game. They go down to uh, Chicago. Go down to or no, in the second game, go down to Chicago and win a game in Chicago. 89 to 85 or something crazy. Um, but it was a defensive game. It's a good game. So um, that's about the spiel. If you guys got questions, you can ask me about teams, players, life, whatever the case may be. There are no bad questions. I know Kevin, uh, Kevin always has a question. Yeah. <laughs> Max Lander? Max Lander. What 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 what's some of the things if you could if you could go over and do it over again? What's some of the things you do differently? Or things you would things you would put more value on? Um I, I think I would I think I would uh work out different. Um the, the fact that I love to play so much when the season was over, I might be playing again a week later. Um, and then the older I got, probably in my fifth year, um, I would take a month off, but then play for the rest of the summer. And right now I, I can't play at all. My knees, the car is going the whole bit. So I would probably do different things to where I wasn't pounding my body so much for so long, constantly, year after year. But my thought process was if I was always out there working, then I was out working the next person. And the way that I got my minutes would be either out working that guy in front of me or he would be injured. And when he was injured, I would take, take advantage of that to the point where gradually, hey, you got to play this guy. Hey, you got to play him. You got to play him. You got to play him to where I got to the point where I was starting. And um, my uh, fourth year in the league, I was starting making $300,000 a year in front of two guys that were making $4 million, which doesn't happen. One, the coach just doesn't do it, but the coach, um, ML Carr, is still a friend of mine today because he just said, you know what, you're playing better than they are. Play. Um, organizations don't let it happen, but you know, one was hurt at one time and I was playing well, let him play. And then the other one was back, wasn't playing well, let him play. And he would play us together. Um, and I played first half of my career at the point guard position, which everybody said I couldn't handle the ball well enough to play that position, but I did. And then they said I was too small to play a shooting guard position. So the last half of my career, I played the shooting guard position. And I had to guard you know, all the 6'7s and 6'8s in the league. I, uh, Kobe and LeBron on some nights, um, Ray Allen, uh, those were all guys, uh, Allen Iverson. Um, you know, those guys are just, you know, some of them were bigger, some of them were, none of them were faster, but, um, and, and not too many of them were stronger, so it was, it was, uh, it gave me somewhat of an advantage, and I took it as that, you know, uh, I had this advantage, so if you're going to post me up, you know, none of you guys, you know, in my playing day were near heavy enough, I wouldn't mind guarding any of you, because I would get you off the block, doing my work early, and then hold on for, hold on for the ride. So. <laughs> David, you kind of halfway answered what I was going to ask, but this is a team that has, like a better way of putting it, you would understand it, shortcomings. Now, it's not the tallest team, but right. not the biggest, thickest team or whatever. They're kind of like you were. Yeah. You know, but how do you mentally handle that? There, there is no, there, there is no, there's no magic to it. Outwork the guy across from you. In practice, outwork each other. Now, some of the best rebounders in the history of basketball weren't seven footers. They knew position, they knew where the ball, and they had just had a nose for the ball. They knew how to go get it. So, um, Rondo, what is he, 6'2? Mm -hmm. How many triple doubles does he have? 
ton because he has a nose for the ball and he goes and gets it. The most important thing in your, one of the most important things about defense is finishing the defensive play. Well, that's with a rebound. So, you have some Why? Why? Well, you preach, you preach that. <laughs> preach, preach, preach that again, Pastor. One more time. What, what, say that again. The most, one of the most important parts of your defense is finishing your defense with a rebound. What, what did we talk about last night this morning, Lavelle? Finish it with a rebound. Okay. They gave away the rebound at the last second. Boy, you're a prophet. See, there, there was a guy, and, and this is the kind of stuff I watch, because, because I always thought it was important when I played. Is, you know, especially because I always seemed to be guarding somebody taller than I was. It didn't matter where I ended up. My job when the ball went up was to find a body. Even if, if, it, wasn't, even if it wasn't my guy, find a body. So the other night I was watching a game, um, the Lakers were playing the Pistons last night. And I saw the guard get lost on a pick and roll. So he's stuck on a pick and roll, his guy comes off, shoots. Now, if you watch most basketball, the ball goes up, what do we do? Okay, my guy just shot over here, I'm standing next to the big guy who just screamed me, right? Mm -hmm. The ball goes up and we stand. Mm -hmm. And watch. But this guard, instead of standing watching, he went and got the big guy. So even if you fall down and you get up, go find somebody. Even if you double team another guy, the, the worst thing you can do is watch film and see you're that guy every single time. Your man is always getting the rebound, and you know that. Sometimes some of the best rebounders were coming from a guard position. They were offensive rebounding, and that's the guy I was guarding. And my job would be simply to block him out. And how ugly it would be that day, the next day when he had four offensive rebounds, and every single time I was doing this instead of blocking somebody out. So it's, you know, to answer the question, it's the little things. If everybody blocks out, then the ball should bounce on the floor. But that's a team thing. You don't get credit for that. You don't get credit for blocking out. You know who you get credit from? Him. Because he sees that. And it's a valuable thing that you guys don't value, but the, okay, there's a starting five in here. Okay, there's a six, seven, eight, nine, there's 13, 14 guys in here. Okay, so most teams may play 10 guys. Well, if you 6 through 10 want to get more minutes, and you 10 through 14 want to get more minutes, how do you do that? There are so many little things that are valuable that make up the difference in, in a basketball game. Um, you know, I played with, with Coach Van Gundy, Jeff, in Houston, and he would give you stats on that kind of stuff. How many, how many, um, two, three-point games were lost because you gave up an offensive rebound on a free throw when you already have inside position. So that was, a, that was like a big focus. We would sit around and practice free throw blocking out. You know, with the guards up top, two guards up top and the three down there, the guards would have to come in, and the two guards that came in were the long rebounders. It was that important. It's part of the process for all of you. How can you be better when you watch yourself play? You know, three or four turnovers. Why? Why were those? Three? Some of those are just good plays. Some of them were just. I was being an airhead. I just. I don't know what I was thinking. I just threw the ball in the front row. You know, how many offensive rebounds do you give up a night, and why? Are you watching? Are you? Hitting somebody, hit somebody, anybody. It makes a difference, especially in the course of a game, especially if you're losing games by, you know, five or less. You can probably go back and figure out, man, we just gave up eight, nine, ten offensive rebounds. That's hard to win. No questions? Fourth flight crew. <laughs> Talk to yourself normally.
the, the, but the part that we've been talking about, our margin for error is very small mm -hmm. for, our, for our group. Or it's a very, very small margin for error. And the details are going to be the difference in us being people and not being people. Attention to detail. How many times do you have your coach say, <laughs> start here, run down and touch that line, and run back? And seven of you get close to the line, but don't touch it. And, you know, the guy that's touching it notices all of you not touching the line. But that's attention to detail. If you're going to cheat that part of it, you're going to cheat the rest of your game. Because you're going to always find the easy way out. It's another half a step. But you don't touch the line because what? It's not that important to you. But when you're rebuilding and when you're trying to build something, all those things are important. Well, if you're not touching the line, are you blocking out? Are you really blocking out? Are you really saying, I'm not letting my man get the ball? You know, are you really in a defensive stance? Are you really making that defensive rotation? Are you making it out of instinct and with, with passion? Or are you just, I'm supposed to be here, so I'm going to go stand over here? It makes a difference in the course of a season and games. You lose games and, you know, well, we lost another one. But you didn't have to lose that one. It just took one more play by one more person. Which person is that? You know how, you know how important it is to vote? They always talk about how important it is to vote. It's the same thing. Your individual effort is just like voting. Your vote counts. Your effort matters in every play. So is the first play. Do you think the jump ball matters? Yep. That's one more possession. Margin for error. All we're talking about is a little margin. You've got to close that margin by doing the smaller little things. And they say little things, but they're not little. They're very big. Especially when five of those cost you a game. No question. Not one. Does anybody want to know how my day is? What's NBA for DM now? <laughs> I got to tell what the per diem is. It's a lot. <laughs> per diem is how much money you get when you travel. So they'll have food in the mock. I tell them about, they'll have food in the mock room on the plane, but then you get. All right, so what is it, 100? 115 now. Stock money. All right, so, and you guys aren't, aren't necessarily in the, in the, out there as much, but it, it, it matters that it's 115 because and I'll tell you the quick story. One year I was in New York, my, my game day routine was I would eat breakfast and that would be it. So right after shoot around 10, 11, 12 o'clock, I would eat breakfast, a nice big breakfast. And then I would play at seven or eight, whatever it was. And so, um, I ate breakfast, and I think it was a TV game, so it was more like eight. And I was hungry, and we're in New York, and I'm getting ready to go over to the arena, and I need something to eat. And I don't want to. I don't not. I don't usually eat at this time, so I don't want to eat anything that's going to mess up my stomach, and I don't want to be too full. So I order a peanut butter and jelly sandwich from room service, and it was twenty-seven dollars. <laughs> now, outside my room, I can see a little convenience store where I could have bought bread, peanut butter, jelly, and, and spent about $7. Yeah, so per diem is a lot, but some of the hotels we stay in, they know you're not going out, and they know you're going to buy it, so supply and demand. I know you got for deal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's for every game day. For every day. That's every day you're on the road. You get 115. So if you go on a week trip, you guys can do the math. You see the trainer show up with a bag with 15,000. Oh, and it's in cash most of the time. Yeah. The trainer has his little satchel. You know it's a line road trip. <laughs> I just have an envelope, just a regular envelope. Yeah. Not just quite a stick. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it like, what was it like being a teammate with LeBron? 
it, it was good because it was, uh, when I was there, um, I want to say he was in his fourth year. And uh, to see uh, a guy that young be that aware and in tune to what was going on and no. Right. So if you see him, he plays the point guard position many times. Um, and he knew all of them. He knew everything that everybody was supposed to be doing. He had actually come down, put you in a place, you, 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 and tip them over the top. You're going this way and direct traffic, just like a point guard should be able to. Um, in pregame, when we're getting ready for a team, so let's say we were trying to go, we were designing to guard Kobe. We're going to send him this way. He would say, no, we shouldn't do that because if you did me like that, I would just and we change our whole coverage. Um, so that aspect of it, and of course, he loves to play, he works hard, uh, he doesn't miss. Uh, when I got there for preseason, um, you know, we were playing up and down, and he had just got back from um, Olympic Games, World Games, something, and they didn't want him to play. And by the third day, came out and played one game just because he couldn't sit and watch. Um, so he loves to play. He's, he's a gym rat. And uh, I mean, really, just really, really good to just see him do what he does. And the fact that he dunks the way he dunks and he comes down on his heels and my back would be killing me for months. Um, I don't know how he's not hurt every game. He gets hit and bad angles and he just he's built like a truck. <laughs> Is he the best athlete in the league? Uh, absolutely. Not even close. Yeah, I, I don't uh, I, I would say best total package in the league. Yeah. Um, there might be a better athlete, but they don't shoot it and dribble it like he does. They don't pass it like he does. You know, he's a, he's a combination of probably Magic and Jordan. Um, Athletically tall, can see the floor, can pass it, put it on time, that kind of thing. He's not the best basketball player. Go best up Kobe size now. Until he gets more rings. Kobe will always have. And I'm not a Kobe fan at all. But <laughs> you gotta give it where it's where it is. Come on. The guy gets it done, period. What about my boy Melo though? <laughs> 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 Are you from Denver? I hope you're from Denver no, or something. No, Melo, New York? boy. No. Like, 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 like your boy is in pick up and call, hey, Melo, what's up? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What? No. What's up? Look hey, hey, what you got tonight. No, no, I'm just playing with you. Um, Melo is, Mello is, is nowhere near in that conversation. Wow. What about What about Melo and Durant, though? Durant, Durant, hey, Durant, Durant. Durant at the end of his career will be in that conversation. Melo is not in that, Melo is not even Durant conversation. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Sit, down. Sit, Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Hey, we still going to win the championship this year. It don't matter. It don't matter. Don't matter. What, in New York? Yes. <laughs> so who the best point guard in the league right Tony Park? Derrick Rose. Damn, Williams. Uh, I, I think, uh, I, I think you could make an argument for yeah, I, you know, before I would say the best, I would put a, a top five, right. and and those guys, you know, the guys you're naming Rondo, Paul, Rose, well, Rose isn't even on the floor yet, so I don't even know about him. Uh, he won't be on the, he won't be on the floor for another month, maybe. Still coming back from ACL. He ain't gonna be back until March, No. What's that about there? I mean, what about Tony Park? Tony Park is still one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> He's already won two games this year. Yep. Game one is buckets. So you saying you saying Kevin Durant ain't in the same conversation as LeBron and, and Kobe now? Not yet. Not not yet. Not yet. So I mean, kill you. You're, you're, slow down. Slow down. You said you said and with LeBron and who? Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. Well, it is for me. It's Kobe and LeBron and LeBron. You know. Three more championships and he's elevated. But you know, we're talking MVPs, MVP of finals. 
Well, you've been in the league for three years, four years. Yeah. You know I mean? Those guys are just, but the most potential to get there, I, I would say KD is. It still makes him a little more. He's a top 10 leading scorer at the end of it. Yeah. Were you on a team uh, where in the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Pistons, LeBron had like 26 points in a row? Yeah. That was, was the year before. That was the year before you? Yeah. No, it was, it was special. Though. You had the guard Tony Park in the finals? <laughs> no. no. This is president of the Tony Park <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he. Uh, but I've had to guard him. I didn't guard him in the finals, but I've had to guard him in the How quick he was. Very quick. Very I mean, you have to stay ready. You know, and I learned this pretty much, you know, in my young career that and veterans have an advantage that you, you, you don't get until you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm first, second year, and uh, we're going to play Utah. And I go out, and I'm standing across, and I see John Stockton down there getting, getting warmed up, and I'm saying, I'm about to make a name for myself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's older. I'm about to give it to him. And <laughs> since, since 1900s, They've been running the same play. They call it autos. You know, it's, it's basically it's a UCLA cut, and him and Malone were so good. So he passes it in or passes it somewhere, and he's not even running fast. And I'm running. I'm you know I'm all in my you know I'm going. <laughs> and Malone was throwing that thing like it could have touched my face. Lay up. <laughs> so I come back, I'm like, damn, all right, all right, all right, come on, all right. All right so <laughs> I got this, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you, ball bounce right there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, we're good, we're good. Pick and roll. Good, okay. So he's averaging probably, I don't know, 12, 14 points and 15 assists a game. He had 25 that night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. This is my first time. I'm young, I'm young. So the next time, I'm saying, it's a whole difference. I'm ready for all these little dumps and dinks. I got them. Same thing. <laughs> I mean, he just had a knack of just throwing that thing. And, you know, I'm thinking, I'm going to be ripping this guy. And I'm going to be, no. And Parker, you know, now that he's getting older, he's, he's the same way. You know, guys go out there and they, uh, Steve Nash, don't go out there thinking you're just going to run, do your thing with them. Those guys have been playing and they know how to play and they get little stuff, little stuff. They don't even, you know, it's not a splash. Because when I looked at the stat sheet, I didn't expect to see 25. I expect to see like 10 or 12. You know, you got there a couple of times. Now he's out there roasting me. <laughs> so, it, it's 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 fun, and the league gets really fun when you get to your seventh, eighth, ninth year in the league. I mean, it's just you know you see these young rookies coming out here, all athletic. Um, God, what's this guy's name? Uh, Richardson. Jason. Jason Richardson. So I go out to I go out to Golden State. Uh, his rookie year. I think it was his rookie. And, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting for this guy. You know, I'm not even feeling good that day. And I'm coming off, and I'm, I'm just setting him up normal, wide open, by him. And this dude, I mean, we're talking athletically. I mean, the difference is here, like not even close. I have no, not even close. So he catches the ball in the wing one time, and he gives me a move that I was nowhere close to. Went to the basket hard, finished, and I'm saying, what have you been doing all night? That was the only time he did it. But every time he touched the ball, he didn't go anywhere. And I said, you got so much advantage over what I'm giving to you right now, and that's all you're giving to me? I mean, nothing. But I had a great game, he didn't, and, I'm, and I wondered why for a long time. But he obviously didn't play. But when you get older, you just, you just know stuff. I didn't, I didn't go faster than him. Yeah, I mean, if he if he contested, I mean, he jumps out of the gym, but he was never there. Because I would just set him up, get him leaning one way, go another way, and I wasn't going at full speed. 
that it had to because he didn't know how to play the game. The part that I, that I hope you guys realize, when you, especially when you go to see a game live, when you bust out of the horn and serious, when you get, if you get a chance to go, go, they, those guys in that league, they don't miss open shots. <laughs> it don't matter. One through five, very rarely do they miss open shot. Now, part of it is they know what shot is their shot, and they don't shoot a shot that they can't make. And two, they work on it. And, you know, and that's the thing if you can talk about how much time guys spend, and especially you, who is, you know, as good as it was in the league when guys are open and making shots. Yeah, I, and that's, you know, when I talk about liking to play, loving to play, being in the gym, you know, um, some guys can't wait to do the next thing. So the whole time you're going through practice, you're sitting there thinking, I'm going to see my girl when I'm done. I'm going to back and play some video games when I'm done. We're going out when we're done. When you're ready to do other things, you're never going to give your best at what you're doing. I, I wanted to be there. So after practice, instead of racing out of the gym, if, if you really care about this process, you stay in the gym and you work on that shot, you know, that 15-footer, that turnaround post-up, that come off the screen, you know, jump shot, three-point shot, whatever it is, so that when you're in a game, you don't even think about it. And everybody knows, I'm sure every one of you guys have been in the zone at some point. Well, the difference between you and an NBA player is they find a way to get there more often. The difference between a guy like me and Jordan is, in my world, he stays in the zone because he had that ultimate concentration. You know, it's almost like Tiger. That's how he was beating people all those years is because his ability to be focused on that one shot each and every time. Hit a bad shot, didn't matter. Turn that off, we're on the next moment and we're doing. So you miss a shot, turn it off, it's done. So you can't have it back. You can't reshoot it. Be done with it, go to the next thing and make a, make a good play. You know, I, I know you've all heard about turn one bad play into another bad play. So you miss the layup, and then you go down and foul. Or you turn the ball over, then you go down and foul. Forget that play. It's over. You know you did it. Now we're going to do what's next, and that's defend and get it back. So, any more? What was your schedule like, like on a day-to-day -day basis, like in the preseason? In the preseason? Yeah, like yeah. before the season started. Like, what would you do, like, every day? Oh, oh, yo, like working out. Um, um, my schedule would usually start out um, in the morning. I would, and this is, and I'm talking about the middle of my career. I would get to where um, I would do an hour, hour of cardio, whether it be elliptical, treadmill, whatever. Hour of cardio, lift, go on. Then I would come back and play. And then it would just be about playing. So, um, and then there were days when I would go hour cardio, lift, shoot, just me, just shoot, and then come back and play. Those were what my days were like. And they, they were, they were like two days, but I didn't really think of them as two days. I just thought, I mean, what else do I have to really do? You know, uh, and, you know, especially especially young in my career, before I had kids and. and up until about the middle to late part, I, I mean, what do I really have to do in my day? You know, when I went back to Baylor in 2009, the funniest thing to see was that you go, you guys have cell phones, computers, in class. That blew me away. We didn't have that. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. So we weren't sitting there texting in the middle of class. There wasn't a whole lot. I mean, you guys are so you know, the, the guys on the team, they sat around and put, looked on YouTube all the time. Like, that's just more stuff to do that doesn't keep your mind on basketball or school. A little bit of a disadvantage or advantage. What do you guys do? What do you do? <laughs> Guard. Guard. Forward. Forward. Guard. Guard. Four. 
Uh, nobody says sinner. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. short toes. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's good. That's good. Uh, who's the tallest? Six eight. Six, six, no, six eight. Six eight. Six eight. Six eight. Corey. Any more? Any other questions? I want to know how your life was in college. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean on your day to day basis? Your booty work? Um, you know, probably, probably a lot like yours. You know, I would, uh, you know, go to school, go to practice. Um, you know, I, I remember in junior college, I would go to school, go to practice, and then I might go back and shoot at night uh, when I was able to get back in the gym. Uh, I didn't have that access at Baylor, but I would have. But go to school, go to practice, go do homework, chill, that kind of stuff. Same stuff y'all do. But as long as I could be in the gym, if I could get to the gym early, I would. If I could stay late, I would. Um, you know, most of the times I end up playing one on one after practice every day, every day, one on one. What actually one on one messed up my game because I when I was in, when I was in high school. I used to play against this guy who, um, I guess Curly Neal must have been his favorite player because all he did was, <laughs> he shaped me, had a wide open shot, let me come back. <laughs> I mean, all he wanted to do was handle, I mean, and he used to drive me crazy, so my assistant coach was walking by one day, and uh, he said, man, y'all doing way too much to get a score, man, y'all doing way too much, y'all need to play two dribble, so two or three dribble one on one. So from the time I was a sophomore in high school, every time I played one-on-one, -on -one, I never played more than two dribbles. But it hurt me because I wasn't out there. I needed that. I needed a little bit of that. So I should have done both. But I felt like even in, when I was in the league, I didn't need more than two dribbles to get to where I was going. Especially when I moved over to the two-guard spot, it was catch and shoot, catch two dribble layup, catch. I mean, I wasn't that guy. I didn't go into my bag and come up with something. So. <laughs> hey, I used to carry that mug. Well, I, I played with I played against Iverson when he was a rookie. So <laughs> he's got nothing on the floor. Like, like, how you gonna guard that? <laughs> he's holding it. Come on, ref, call that. And uh, I know y'all probably looked at the one where he, uh, where he got Iverson. I mean, where he got Jordan. Yeah, good times. Huh? It's the opposite of dribbling. Yeah, yeah. And even when they even when they stopped it, it was still it was still kind of bad. So, any other questions? Did you have money to the NCAA tournament? Nope. NIT. I had guys on my team that didn't like to play. I had guys that we go. Um, when season started, we, you know, we'd all get together. We'd have to go run, lift weights, and then we had to play three games. Three games of seven. Some guys will lie about their three games of seven. <laughs> no, I already played three. I got to go. And then be laying up with your girl or, you know, sitting on the couch. But we usually, we usually, up, we usually end up having guys from the campus play. Like we knew two or three guys that could play decent, that wanted to be on the team. but. Couldn't get on. Yeah, y'all come play with us just so we'd have ten to play. But I, I played one on one a lot because we had guys that didn't want to play, and I hate two on two. Two on two is a waste of time. I mean, I I can get my shot. What about passing the ball to you? <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Study.